Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes. When we look at this image of a woman breastfeeding her own father, what do we see? Suicide bomber launches attack near Turkish parliament. Suicide bomber detonates device near ministry in Ankara, say officials. Slovakia election, strongman Robert Fico's return to power. The Khashoggi murder five years later, has the world moved on? When we look at this image of a woman breastfeeding her own father, what do we see? Telegraph. A painting depicting an elderly man chained in a prison cell being breastfed by a young woman is part of a new exhibition at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. The painting, titled Roman Charity, is an interpretation of an ancient Roman story recorded by Valerius Maximus in the 1st century CE. The story tells of a daughter, Pero, who visits her father, Simon, in prison and saves him from starvation by breastfeeding him. The painting, along with many other depictions of the story, raises questions about the nature of the family, the boundaries of love and duty, and the erotic connotations of the scene. The painting Roman Charity is not the only interpretation of the story. There are hundreds of versions of the scene, known as Simon and Pero or Roman Charity, in museums and galleries around the world. The scene, which involves an act of breastfeeding between family members, has been viewed as an example of the highest form of family love and service, but also raises uncomfortable questions about incest and the boundaries of familial relations. The exhibition at the Fitzwilliam Museum explores the changing nature of families throughout history and the debates surrounding family life. The story of Simon and Pero serves as a reminder that the family has never been uncontroversial and has always been subject to change and reinterpretation. The paintings of the scene provide a valuable historical resource for understanding the complexities of family dynamics and the different ways in which love and duty can be expressed. The inclusion of the painting in Vermeer's Lady at the Virginals with a Gentleman suggests that the story continued to resonate with audiences even in the 17th century. Suicide bomber launches attack near Turkish parliament. Telegraph. Two terrorists carried out a bomb attack near Turkey's parliament on Sunday morning, the country's government said. The blast occurred just hours before parliament was set to reconvene after its summer recess. One of the terrorists died in the explosion and the other was neutralized by authorities. Two police officers were injured in the attack, but neither were believed to be in serious condition. Authorities did not specify any particular terrorist group as being suspected of carrying out the attack. An investigation has been opened into the incident. Suicide bomber detonates device near ministry in Ankara, say officials. The Guardian. Two terrorists carried out a bomb attack in front of the interior ministry buildings in Ankara, Turkey on Sunday. One of the attackers died in the explosion, while the other was neutralized by authorities. The blast occurred less than a mile from Turkey's parliament building, just hours before lawmakers were due to return for the reopening of parliament after a three-month summer break. Two police officers were slightly injured in the incident. Authorities closed a main road and carried out controlled explosions for suspicious package incidents in other parts of the city. The Turkish government has banned media access and publication of the attack. Slovakia election, strongman Robert Fico's return to power. Deutsche Welle. Former Prime Minister Robert Fico's Smur SD party won Slovakia's parliamentary elections, taking 23.3% of the vote and beating the Liberal Progressive Slovakia party. Five other parties also crossed the 5% threshold to enter parliament, with the highest voter turnout in 20 years. Fico's victory is likely to weaken Western unity on Ukraine, as he has promised to end military support for Ukraine and may seek to block further EU sanctions against Russia. There are concerns that a smur led government could isolate Slovakia within the EU, similar to Hungary. The Khashoggi murder five years later, has the world moved on? Deutsche Welle. Saudi human rights activists are calling on the international community to take a less transactional approach to Saudi Arabia and to prioritize human rights and democratic values. The activists argue that ignoring human rights abuses when dealing with autocratic regimes does not serve a country's own strategic interests or bring about human rights. They believe that it is possible to engage with Saudi Arabia while still criticizing its human rights abuses. The activists also highlight the ongoing lack of justice for the murder of Saudi dissident Jamal Khashoggi five years ago. They argue that the world has moved on from the case, with attention focused on other issues such as potential normalization with Israel and economic developments. The activists stress the importance of continuing to fight for justice for Khashoggi and to raise awareness of ongoing human rights abuses in Saudi Arabia. They believe that prioritizing stability over human rights sends the wrong signal to the world and to dictators that they can get away with murder. Is time up for Bob Menendez? The Guardian. The U.S. Senator for New Jersey, Bob Menendez, and his wife have been charged with accepting bribes in exchange for political favors. 
prosecutors raided Menendez's home in 2022 and found almost $500,000 in cash, 13 gold bars, and a Mercedes-Benz allegedly bought for the couple. The indictment accuses Menendez of using his position as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee to benefit Egypt in exchange for hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes. He is also accused of attempting to disrupt a criminal prosecution in New Jersey on behalf of a businessman friend. Menendez has pleaded not guilty to the charges and has stated that he will not step down from his position or halt his plans for re-election next year. However, at least 18 Senate Democrats, as well as New Jersey's governor and most of the state's congressmen and women, have called for his resignation. Menendez has claimed that he has been falsely accused because he is Latino and his family history of confiscation in Cuba is why he kept such a large amount of cash. The charges may bring an end to Menendez's political career, but he is fighting against the allegations. America's new print-only newspaper reinvents the art of reading slowly. The Guardian. County Highway, a U.S. publisher, has launched a print-only broadsheet newspaper called County Highway, which is inspired by 19th-century newspapers. The newspaper will focus on in-depth stories and will not have an internet edition, hoping to offer readers an immersive experience without constant distractions or the specter of other people's responses on social media. The publisher will also focus on books that conglomerates tend to ignore and the new company, Pan American Books, will share sales proceeds 50 to 50 with its authors. The Karlov Nosgard on his process, passions and life after my struggle. The Guardian. In an interview with The Observer, Norwegian writer Karlov Nosgard discusses his writing process and the themes of his latest novel, The Wolves of Eternity. Nosgard reveals that he does not plan his books in advance, but rather follows his fascination with certain topics. He also speaks about his interest in black metal music and transhumanism, which he explores in his novels. Nosgard reflects on the success of his autobiographical series, My Struggle, and the impact it had on his relationships with family members. He also talks about the importance of honesty in writing and the role of his editor in his creative process. China's film industry rides summer wave of COVID-delayed movies. Will it last? South China Morning Post. China's film industry has experienced a recovery this summer, with the box office reaching a record high of 20.6 billion Chinese yuan, $2.8 billion, by the end of August. The strong performance is attributed to the easing of COVID-19 restrictions, which allowed cinemas to reopen and screenings to take place. The summer period is traditionally a lucrative time for Chinese filmmakers, and this year saw 155 films released between June and August, compared to 92 in 2022. Domestic films have been particularly popular, with the Tang Dynasty-inspired animation 30,000 Miles from Chang'an, the mystery crime film Lost in the Stars, and the martial arts film Never Say Never accounting for 63% of the overall summer box office. However, industry insiders are uncertain about the sustainability of the recovery, with concerns that it may represent a short-term rebound rather than a long-term trend. The film industry in China is undergoing a transitional period, with small production companies becoming more risk-averse and actors being paid less. Sam Bankman Fried Trial, Top Deputy, Ex-Girlfriend Caroline Ellison Star Witness. Wall Street Journal. Caroline Ellison, a former employee of FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried, is set to be a key witness in his fraud trial. The trial, which begins this week, will be the first time that Ellison has spoken publicly about FTX since its collapse. Ellison has pleaded guilty to seven criminal counts and has agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. She has been accused of being involved in criminal activity, including bribery in China and defrauding FTX customers of billions of dollars. Ellison's testimony will likely include Signal and Slack messages, as well as handwritten notes and lists she made. Her testimony could be particularly personal and raw, as she has detailed her complicated and sometimes romantic relationship with Bankman Fried, as well as her interest in polyamory. The collapse of FTX has been described as one of the biggest financial frauds in U.S. history. Bankman Fried has pleaded not guilty, and his lawyers argue that prosecutors have not established that Ellison acted at his direction. And that's a wrap for today's news. We've covered a range of stories, from art exhibitions and political developments to human rights issues and the world of literature. First, we explored the controversial painting depicting a woman breastfeeding her own father, which raises questions about the nature of family and the boundaries of love. It's fascinating to see how this ancient Roman story continues to resonate with audiences and provoke discussions about family dynamics. Next, we discussed the bomb attacks in Turkey near the Parliament and Interior Ministry buildings, highlighting the ongoing challenges the country faces in terms of security and terrorism. It's a reminder that the fight against extremism is far from over.
Moving on to Slovakia, we learned about former Prime Minister Robert Fico's return to power and the potential implications of his victory for Western unity on Ukraine. It's a development that could have wider implications for the region and the EU as a whole. Shifting our focus to Saudi Arabia, we heard from human rights activists who are calling for a more principled approach to dealing with autocratic regimes. They emphasize the need to prioritize human rights and democratic values, even when engaging with countries like Saudi Arabia. The lack of justice for Jamal Khashoggi's murder was also highlighted, reminding us of the ongoing human rights abuses in the country. We then turned to U.S. politics and the case against Senator Bob Menendez, who has been charged with accepting bribes. The charges could potentially bring an end to his political career, but he is fighting against them. It's a reminder of the importance of integrity and accountability in public office. On a lighter note, we explored the launch of a print-only newspaper in the U.S., which aims to offer readers an immersive and distraction-free reading experience. It's a unique take on the traditional newspaper format and a reminder of the enduring power of print media. In the world of literature, we had an interview with Norwegian writer Karlov Nosgaard, who discussed his writing process and the themes of his latest novel. It's always interesting to hear about an author's creative journey and the ideas that inspire their work. Lastly, we delved into the recovery of China's film industry this summer, with the box office reaching record highs. While this is a positive development, there are concerns about the sustainability of this recovery and the challenges the industry faces in the long term. That's it for today's news. I hope you've enjoyed our journey through these diverse stories. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. What are your thoughts on these topics? Do you have any questions or opinions you'd like to share? Let's discuss. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.